guys. So start to finish on the cast, I like to set it up where I'm not casting my knot through my tip top. So this leader hips is about two feet long, set it up, flip the thumb, flip the bail of my thumb, and then the wind at my back as they're casting. I'm just gonna kind of flip it out there, gonna throw it a little bit up. As it loses the momentum, I catch it and let it fall. And I give it a little tug to make sure it vibrates so I know it's swimming correctly. And then I'm going to let that line kind of rest on the surface of the water so we get some surface tension and that bait falls cleanly to the bottom. Now it's just reached bottom, we're in about 19 feet of water and I'm going to go to my cadence. So my first lift is just to see it on bottom and make sure it's swimming correctly and the bait sure enough is. So then I'm going to go in and lift. We just caught fish three casts in a row and all of them pinned it to the bottom. So I'm going to slow my, my lift back down where I'm going to vibrate it about three times, let it reset bottom and then reel down to that to get rid of the slack where the boat's moving, and then lift again. Let it roll three, four times, set bottom, reel down to it, and go. Set down to it, let it pause, and just go. And that's my cadence. I get back to the boat, fish it vertically, because it seems like the fish pick it up on about the third or fourth lift. Uh, third or fourth lift, and then when it turns the corner, we call it the J. So as you're third or fourth lift, you got enough time to attract the fish's attention. They come over and eat the thing. It changes direction. We call it hook fishing the J. It changes direction, so that's another time when they'll, they'll crack it. And then the last time is they'll get the last, last chance at it right below the boat. You can fish it vertically right there. So your best three chances to catch a fish are on one cast. And that's like on your third or fourth lift generally, when it turns the corner or right under the boat. And finishing the drift under the boat, you're saying you would normally do three, four lifts right here when it's vertical. What would your lift be? How far off the bottom when it's vertical and you're finishing your drift, would you lift it? Uh, vertical because you're, you're absolutely in straight contact with it. You're probably moving the bait two feet. Because at that point, you're definitely, you're, you're kind of giving them that last reaction. They watch it do something here. They, they follow it back to the boat. Now you're going to give it a completely different action right down there. You're still going to reset bottom. You're still going to do all the same cadences. But honestly, you just want to get that cast over and get on to the next one. But you don't want to give up on it. So you treat it a little bit differently. You, you, the fish will reward you handsomely sometimes. Uh, seems like some of our biggest fish come right at the bottom of the boat. Finishing um, your drift is critical. It, right? Absolutely. I mean, whether you're fishing a hair, whether you're fishing a blade, whether you're fishing a jig and wrap, finishing your drift at the boat is critical because you got to assume that there is something followed it all the way and it's went boom, 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 and now it stops because you're straight up and down and it's lift up, down, up, down, whatever that is. I don't think it matters what you're fishing. That straight up and down is, is critical. I don't know if you can see that on the rod tip, but I know right away that that bait folded over on that corner. As soon as it changed direction, just that little bit of current caused that bait to roll differently. Let's show that. And it, it caused it to roll differently and that back hook caught. Very common, but when you're, like I say, when you're in constant touch with your bait, you, you'll recognize that, um, that something's wrong with it. You can, if you can't shake it free, which is hard to kind of re, hard to do at a distance, if you can't shake it free, just abort the cast and uh, bring it back in and reset. And go back to square one. When you're fishing two, three, four guys in the boat, if everyone's fishing, could you see that? Yes. I don't know if you could see that hit on the drop. Well, we will see it on video because well, it was... I felt it in the rod handle. I watched the slack line. And you're going to see this fish right in the mouth. Crack it. So, a little something like that. <laughs> Another good one. To the, the difference in bait that they, they caught and ate, they, they, that was on the drop. You watched it knock slack in the line. I could, it hit it so hard I could feel it. But that bait's completely in its mouth. It's got both treble hooks, one in the jaw, one in the roof, the, the bone of the roof of the mouth. You see. But you can absolutely see where that fish yeah. cracked that bait swimming. It's super aggressive. We got the bite window right now. I didn't check the moon phase, but I'm, I'm guessing we got a bite window. We are kind of losing our wind, but once we found something, Came back to some numbers that we had um, really getting some better fish like i said that that's that's a good one if you look at these things the way they're designed they really are the trollers have an advantage because these fish feed up you don't really want to fish below them but when you're in this mud they will tip down and crack whatever's down there but ideally they're fishing you want to fish above them but there's certain times when they're just they're, they're active and aggressive and killing baits on the bottom 
but you can see from, right from the placement of their head yep. that, on how that is. The, the trollers really do have an advantage by fishing multiple rods and combining just above their heads. These fish come up and eat. In the course of your day, how often are you changing your cadence and rhythm, your lift patterns? Do you have a certain go-to that that is your cadence and you might deviate a little bit and see if they want something different? Uh, the answer is I'm constantly changing, constantly doing something. I definitely start with that three, that, that pull that's like three vibrations and then drop. Uh, from there, I usually actually slow it down and do like one or two. Seldom do I pull it more than three or four times. I will, I will just change the direction of how I pull my rod tip. And you uh, mean three or four times vibration? Boom, 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 boom. I'll lift it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ten years. Are you in the market currently? I already bought it. Oh, you did? You know, that's, so. that's a perfect example, everybody. For whatever reason, now this is a keeper sized fish. This whole spring is noticeably skinny all the way down through. Now, yes, they're post spawn, but by this point, we should have, we should have a little bit more weight on these fish. What you'll notice too is I, I use the wheel, the reel like a winch, let the rod do its job, let the reel drag do their business. The way these fish are hooked sometimes, especially with jigging rods, um, you just got to keep that hook in them. If you were to reel down to these like it was a big fish or a salmon or have to chase them, it, it just doesn't work that way on these fish. Oh, look at two fish with it. There's two fish with that thing. Did you look with it? I didn't. Two fish swimming around. It looked like pickerel actually. Oddly enough, they must have been aggressive. Because if I missed the first one, that one had a break right in the right near armpit. Just let that bait just change direction, they pop off. You know, you get them hard in the mouth, then sometimes they eat that bait and it's right down in their throat. And those last couple have been 
have been right on that one or two, you know, right at the very end, which they're just not hitting it with reckless abandon. So, oh! Not with show the camera. That's so you're, that's the only reason? Yeah. closer to probably 19. So following what we do, I'm gonna let the big one go, but the little guy is gonna go for a ranger ride. The redneck cap of the world is probably the panhandle floor. There you go. I hadn't even lifted it yet. Boy, if it's a walleye, it's a good one. I think he's tail hooked. It looks like it was some weird fish slaps there. It's not a walleye. It's not a walleye. Get in there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think we got that too. We boat flip 26 inch pickerel all the time. Ground ball. Something about that, your rod tip, I was like, this does not look like a wall. Well, I hadn't, I hadn't even yeah. lifted it up off the bottom. Yep. So. Well, I probably never even got closer. He probably ate it halfway down and yeah. went around with it. We just got bit off by a pickerel if I boat flipped. So I'll start with a new knot. Uh, with these, I like to improve. I throw the improved clinch knot. So, what I the reason for that? Polymer stronger. Aaron's knot stronger. All these knots are stronger. Of course, I can't see anything today without glasses. So, come through. But the reason for this knot is because it balances the bait really well. It pulls straight, which is absolutely required when I get a Palomar knot going. They don't seem to pull as straight for me because of the way they don't come out of the center of the knot. Yes. So I'll, I'll do a small improved clinch knot. And I all but guarantee there's a better knot out there and someone can argue that all day long. All I'm doing is what explaining what I do. Um, improved clinch knot, very simple to tie. It's probably the first one we all learn as kids and we go back to it. It's plenty strong for the fish we're using. Uh, pulls the bait straight and what you'll notice after you catch a big fish all of a sudden these things start catching up and bungling and doing weird things What you're gonna find is perhaps that knot has stretched on a big sheephead or a big carp or a big smallmouth or something happens Just cut it off and retie it and you'll find that your baits gonna go back normal because that knot is actually an important part of the connection in this in the business of this where you want that to pull out straight from that I would like to think that everyone that's that's a friend of the channel here knows is I never use the words or I never use the term this is the only way there's only one way I don't believe that in the world of fishing but what I will tell you is is that in this situation you have someone and, and Mike owns the company he's done all the research hands-on to figure out how to make this particular product work the best Oh, it doesn't look bad. It's perfect. You can see, like you say, that that fish probably pinned that to the bottom where, based on where he's hooked. I mean, if they do come in snagged, and they're not snagged. So, you take a look at these, and you can see that that fish pinned that to the bottom, but that's the hook that got them. So a lot of times you'll catch a fish, and they're hooked like here. And now you can understand why, because almost anywhere in that circle, other than not, you'll never even on top of the head. You'll always see them like in the, like th that's, like they hit the front of that bait and the, when you set the hook, the back one grabs them, just gets them a little bit better. Yeah. So but when you see a fish that's outside of the mouth like that, you can, you know, he pinned that to the bottom. Well, and like and you like said, say, because or, of his he, eye placement, he would have no choice yeah. if he's going to see that lure. So yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. Otherwise, if it was in his mouth, like the last one was deep buried in there. That's why that's why that pause in your cadence super important. Gave him a chance to trap it to the bottom. Yep. We're sitting here talking. We just filmed the fishing report, and all of a sudden we see turns going nuts, diving on bait. So we quick scream over here and we throw blades through it, but we don't see a single fish busting underneath them. So they just haven't found him yet. But like Mike just said, that's just a matter of time before the smallies find him. And then, of course, those walleyes will come up too, which that would be pretty cool. That would be something I've never done. 
is catching walleyes on on actively schooling smallies pushing bait to the surface. Usually the walleyes will stay under the school. We found this, like say, fishing in open years ago. Uh, I was fishing all my spinning rods and I was throwing a rattle bait because I didn't really like throwing jerk baits at the time, didn't know much about them. And the guy I'm fishing with is just catching bass after bass after bass on a jerk bait. And I'm throwing right with him. We're throwing to the same schooling fish. And I'm catching walleye after walleye after walleye pulling a rattle bait under, under. where the fish were. Oh. And I, I'm like, at some point I had to stop because it's a wall, it's a bass tournament. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. as fun as it may be, had to swap over and we went to jerk baits. And what, my problem that day, actually, I lost 11 fish on those little jerk bait hooks. And I really wished I had thought to pull out a blade bait and roll the blade bait under because they would have absolutely jammed it. We've done it a lot of times and I just did, I don't think I even had one with me because you're so limited as a co-angler what you can bring with you. Right. And it didn't, it didn't even occur to me to bring one. So lesson learned, if you have a bait you can cast a little further out of the back of someone's boat, you might be able to get that extra bite. I hope everybody enjoys this video and I hope you as an angler, no matter what your level, pick something up that you can use because I know I did today fishing with Mike and really having the, the first chance for me to get out here and really look for walleye specifically. So I've had a lot of fun. Mike, I couldn't thank you enough for this. Let us know in the comments what stuck out to you or what you what you really learned off this new video. And uh, and let us know what you think. You can get a hold of Mike. All his information will be, will be listed below. i1baits.com. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. You can always get a hold of him. He's got every bait you could possibly want to come on an Ida in any other walleye water and catch fish. Just a couple quick things, man. First of all, Thanks, thank, you for, thank you for fishing with me today. Thank you for helping me promote my business. Thank you for being a uh, soldier in our army. Oh, so thank you for your service. Thank you. It's Memorial Day today when we're, when we're filming this. So let's all remember the people that, that fought and died for all of us and, and allow us to come out and go fishing on a Monday. So thanks everybody. Stay tuned. We got a ton of great stuff coming. As always, thanks for everything. Keep your tip up. Keep your tip up.